Welcome, folks, to Two Guys and Some Horror. There, for the uh, for this episode, as well as next week's, we're going to be experiencing some small, terrifying little puppets as we watch today, Ghoulies 2 and Thanks Killing. Now, uh, I'm kind of segueing into that wonderful open I just created out of thin air. Uh, Curtis, what did you feel about Ghoulies 2? Uh, I, th I think it's a fun movie. I think it's a classic... Uh, 80s horror film uh, and I mean there's really not much else to talk about opinion wise I mean you either like it or you don't I guess right. um, but I think it, I think it is a lot of fun uh, right. to watch right I can, I can get into my uh, my opinions near the end of this this movie or discussion on this movie but okay. I, I want to like kind of get into the uh, synopsis of the film so we, we start out here at the very beginning, and they're, they're in some... This guy's running from, from some people. We don't know who the people he's running from. That, that's never really touched on. Are you describing the opening to Halloween 3, or are you describing Ghoulies 2? Ghoulies 2. <laughs> they're very similar, because the guy's running, and he's got a bag of these little... That's with, like, cats. I mean... That's the only probably. thing I can think of that's in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously. He's got this bag, and he's running away from somebody, and there's this kind of this warehouse area... And he, he, there's acid just conveniently there, so he, or toxic waste or whatever it is, and he drops them inside it, and then this bat one knocks him inside there with them. Yeah, and yeah. he just dissolves. And I guess the cult cult members are someone they're they're chasing him. And okay, so during this scene, the munchies or uh, sorry, the ghoulies. <laughs> classic by the way the gremlins they're all the, they're all the same god damn it stop it <laughs> the critters um by the way uh we will be watching all of these puppet movies very soon <laughs> potentially not in a row uh but <laughs> don't tempt me clark <laughs> we could do we could do we could add critters and just a uh, whole year of munchies puppets. we could do that and then we could do puppet master no that, that could definitely happen anyhow but getting back to the point the important thing like there's there's a truck there for the circus like they're stopping there for gasoline or something and they, the, these ghoulies all like we see four of them go inside the the back of this this Barnum and Bailey circus car but we never see Satan's Den it's got a way cooler name Satan's Den yeah Satan's Den sorry you're right and we don't see what happens to the flying one in fact we don't know what happens to that thing it just randomly shows up in different parts of the movie which that just was on my mind the whole time. I was like, where, where did it come from? So that's never irritated me yeah. until you told me about it. Yeah. And then now it like, it genuinely bothers me. I'm like, okay, you're right. Every other ghoulie gets on the back of that, that truck and they ride the Satan's den to its location. But the bat never does. And they don't explain how the bat gets from A to B. And they don't really show the bat that often throughout the film, other than key moments yeah. for plot points. Yeah, well, it just—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's it annoying. Was, it was just there. It, it just kind of showed up. Which I, I get this is—it's like such a nitpick, but I was just like, where did it come from? Yeah, um, I agree with you one hundred percent. So the beginning of the film, going right. back to talking about the the worshippers and all that—that that is your only tie-in to the original Ghoulies film. Really? So I know you haven't seen Ghoulies. No. Um, I don't recommend seeing it. It's not that great. Um, but the whole point of that film is this man moves into a home, um, finds out that his ancestor of some sort, whoever it was that lived there, who gave him the house, was a worshiper of these ghoulie demon type things. Okay. And learns about this book and this robe and basically becomes a sorcerer and then um, spawns the ghoulies. He calls the ghoulies to our world and then a bunch of stupid crap happens in that film that really isn't that important and he dies and you're left with all of the ghoulies just at this house with no one to control them Segway, fast forward ghoulies 2 starts clearly the people who worship these ghoulies took them and then this man was rescuing them or trying to kill them it seemed like try to get rid of them and that's how we get Ghoulies 2. And I, that's the loosely tie, tie to the first film. I don't even know if we can really call right. it a tie, but that's all I can see in that. So we get a good movie, though, Ghoulies 2. Okay. Well, we know acid doesn't kill them. It can't. 
It, it, we know, yeah, because they get they climb out of the vat of whatever mm-hmm. the crap it is. In and, fact, if anything, that just might be a bath for them. Right. Well, it may it may have been. Which that was kind of. Uh, why did the guy put the bag in there in the first place if it wouldn't kill them? He's. I don't think he knows enough. Yeah. 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 That guy clearly didn't seem to be very smart since he went into the auto mechanic warehouse. That's where he ran into to get away mm-hmm. from these people. He was smart enough to lock the door, which is good. Um, mm-hmm. but also just, that's just a plot point because right. why was that door unlocked in the first place? If there's a vat of harsh chemicals sitting there, um, it was just random. There's... But Hey, we're not here to judge how we get to where we need to go, but that is literally just the segue of the film and getting us to Satan's den. Okay. Um, and Satan's den is where, to me, this is where the movie actually has its high points. You've got a carnival, mm-hmm. you've got a bunch of different attractions you have a uh, antagonist who is the yeah. owner of the carnival. Right, the rich guy. The rich guy. And then you have a protagonist, which is, in my opinion, the kid. You know what? I The protagonist, I feel, of this movie was the, the tight wire walking woman who had her own discussion. Nicole. Yeah. she's uh, the, the kid was a little bit... Uh, I don't know what's the word... Uh, a tool okay a little bit a little bit okay i came here to learn magic from the best yeah type uh your drunk grandfather or uncle or whatever he was to him your drunk person uh isn't probably the best person to the drunk mentor from. yeah the drunk mentor who's trying to use actual magic it's no merlin <laughs> he's like i did it i summoned them i summoned the demons when he so this this old guy he finds the munchies and he uh he thinks he's the one who summoned them, which is you as the viewer, you're like, no, nah, you didn't. They came into the truck, and he's like, he's like, I did it with this book, and he picks up some random book that, for whatever reason, is now tied to the plot of the movie. Uh, that's was, yeah, that's a bit loose there too. Yeah, they yeah. don't really. It is the book. Uh, in the first movie, there was a book, right. but not everyone has just this book. So, ah, it's so frustrating when. They just try to tie these movies together, mm-hmm. and and this is kind of like you know many many other horror films we've watched and are gonna watch have this problem where it's like right. you're not really a sequel. You should have done your own thing. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad this movie was what it was. At the same time, it's just some of the stuff. Yeah, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't have like this book. We'll get rid of them unless it gets introduced and there's some tie-in to what happened in the earlier portion of the movie yes yes we need to know the viewers the viewer will need to be to have an understanding that oh this works because of this reason it's tied to this even though it's not really explained how um and maybe that's where they assume the viewers have seen the first ghoulies because that's the only place you would know that that book does anything for the ghoulies how do and that's but that's the book the old man had right which is how the hell did that guy get the book uh, yeah okay that's that would be another plot thing that you're like what happened yeah i'm not sure maybe it did happen maybe he picked the book up and was like oh a magic book i'm, I'm gonna read this and then when, the yeah. ghoulies showed up <laughs> but they, they never they never showcased that from yeah. what i remember so he's a drunk fool um, mm-hmm. and he he definitely plays that part very well yes um I, and it, so just another plot point for or a good point for this movie is like the acting's not that bad right um it's actually pretty good they do a really good job of acting <laughs> can't complain unlike some other films we're going to talk about um but yeah so they they he claims to have gotten the demons out whatever um well nobody believes him no one it's, it's yeah a, i was gonna say it's a boy crying uh, wolf situation where he runs out and he, he tells everyone that and then he goes back inside have people started he's... funneling in to see the the they have right i think uh this Tunes? point of the movie, like he's telling them that there are monsters in there, and these kids are like, "Oh, look at those!" And then they they like the rat one spits the goop, the sticky goop on the kid, and they're like, "Well, I'm gonna tell everyone." Yeah. So there's the punk ass kids right. that go in, and the cool two kids that are like, "This is a rip off," and they go in. Yeah, and so like the kids convince everyone else, "Wow, this this uh, little." horror scary horror truck is, is is great check it out there are these little creatures that spit on you and it's fun so everybody runs inside runs towards them they they 
they do well for their first night. And uh, who do we lose? So we lose in the punk kids group. We lose one. We lose the we lose the, the one of them that gets left behind. The nerdy kid, the the friend that they really don't want to be there. Yeah, the friend they're like, let's ditch this guy, and they're like, okay. So I'm gonna drop a pin right here. We gotta remember right. this piece because in Thanks Killing, when we get to Thanks Killing, okay. there is a similar friend. If you remember right, in that movie. Oh well, I don't know if they're if that's very similar here, to be honest. But we we could definitely put a. I think we can try to put it together. Yeah, they definitely the three of them try to ditch their friend, which you know, that's happened to me before. So the quote I remember from that <laughs> scene: "Dude, your tunes." So the guy uh, yeah. wanted to take his tunes in. Yeah. And he ends up getting his boombox ends up getting thrashed by the ghoulies. By the ghoulies, yeah. Him. So I thought I always um, I love it whenever assholes get what's mm-hmm. coming to them. And that was kind of one of those moments where the ghoulies... I feel like the ghoulies might could, could be a protagonist in this film. Well, that, that, that's why they did the high five, right? They, oh my god, I lost my Fia. shit when they high five. <laughs> like, it's just randomly these, these like all these kids are inside the car. And this is, this is the next night. This isn't even tied yeah. into that in the plot. But they... They have these kids like being tortured, and everybody's like watching the ghoulies torture these people, and they're like, "Yeah, torture them, ghoulies! Great, yeah, radical!" And the ghoulies just like look at each other and just high five. Yeah, because they're getting cheered on. They're like WWE superstars in the ring at this moment. <laughs> Everyone's so... chanting their name, and they're realistically they're just slaughtering people. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, the, so- the saw, the swinging saw, the the. Uh, the man, what is it? A mandolin blade to chop off the head? Yeah, or whatever they were, it's they called. They were all fake. Like this, this troop's not going to have actual torture equipment, right? I wouldn't think the only except weapon they actually they, have is the knife. Except for those things, really were like sharp. I don't. Which, which I is mean, it just looks scary, random. but yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, why would you really have a torture chamber yeah. in a attraction? You don't really want people to get hurt. No. Um, so fast forward a little bit, we get some more backstory into Nicole, right. her character. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get a sad story about, is it her brother, who was also a trapeze artist? So yeah, so she didn't do the uh, the high wire act. That was that was her plot point in the movie, was with the rich guy, who was the villain. He offered to keep, give her a full-time job as a tight wire walker, walker or tight rope walker, and she's like, no, and then she has the romantic off scene with the the hero of the film the young kid and at that point she she's telling him her sob story yeah yeah which because everyone thought he was taking her into the trailer to bang her yeah and that's yeah. what our whining hero the guy who i would claim is the protagonist yeah that's where but i i clearly can see where you would say he's a bit of a tool you right. know, he makes the assumption that she just opened her legs for him, which that is clearly not her character. She is much stronger than that. And she's the hero. Of the and she's the opinion. she's the hero. Yeah. Well, she saves the day. Uh, speaking of those gypsy chicks, right? Um, the Muffy quote. Did you write that one down? Yes, I have it. I have it here. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Have you seen my little Muffy? Who, Who has hasn't? it? <laughs> I mean, my kitten muscle head. Yeah. Oh, so good. So clearly, she's the slut of the group. Oh, uh, well, she dies. She's the first one who dies, I think. Yep. She dies even before the kids. Yep. Like, she was supposed to leave to go hook up with somebody. Yeah. Um, and, and ditch the, the, the crew for a while, and the ghoulies actually got a hold of her instead. And that was... Yeah, and they and didn't the realize she was gone until, like, the night after. Yep. That was when the ghoulies were high-fiving. When all the crazy uh, commotion had right. really hit the fan. Well, anyhow, her, her tightrope walking uh, backstory... Like it was, uh, it was very reminiscent of the Gremlins. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about next step. Next but, week, yeah, yeah. So that that is funny though. That's a really good point. It's uh, it's that sob story, sob story to bring you into her character more. Um, but it's very yeah, it's been done. Well, they they just kind of they wanted the people, they want the audience to like her character, which they do. They do a pretty good job of. By giving her a subplot. The boys... <gasps> Ghoulies 2? Wow. Only three years after Gremlins came out. Just a side note there. That's interesting that they have such similar style of play. Uh, I, I almost want to say maybe they didn't do it as like a similarity thing. It was just... They just did it. But... I, just interesting. I Sorry. What was, uh, what was the interesting thing when Ghoulies came out? 
Uh, yeah, how close they came out. I mean, three years is pretty far for people to forget about something like that. Like in Gremlins? Movie. Yeah, so Gremlins came out in 84, Ghoulies 2 came out in 87. Didn't Gremlins 2 come out in like 91 or something? It's been a long uh, The new batch? Yeah, the new batch. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it came out in the 90s, early 90s. I think it was 91. Um, I have Bill Gay. Yeah? Yeah. 90. Yeah, 1990. I have Billy Peltzer, uh, the actor for Billy Peltzer up here. But anyhow... Oh, Billy. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk, talk about Ghoulies. So this magic kid, he... Uh, Let's talk about our characters for a second. We have the okay. magic kid who who wants to learn magic from the best, who's an alcoholic, ex has been magician, who now is just a howler for, for this carnival. And what a howler is is somebody who goes, Hey, check out this thing. Yeah. It's scary. And then he takes your money. Uh, but this kid's learning magic from him over, over the summer and he's kind of like the the student or the pupil character. Like you have the master and their pupil. And mm-hmm. They've made the master a, re- a recovering alcoholic here. And then you have the damaged tightrope walker who will never tightrope walk again. You have the villain who's just this guy who ends up getting his balls bitten off at the end of the movie. <laughs> and then you have uh, just a random crew of, teen- of rough white teenagers who you kind of root for the ghoulies to kind of tear apart. And then you have the ghoulies themselves, which... Oh, yeah, and the the short guy. Ned. The, Ned, the dwarf, yes. Sir Ned. Sir Ned, yes, the uh, the character. Our dwarf. Yeah, so I would you, say... You have was, to have a dwarf if you really want to go on an adventure. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of the comedic relief. You remember in the 1980s, you always had that side char- comedic relief character? In reality, he uh, was the side guy. Phil Fondacaro is his name, and he's in many things. I looked him up uh, whenever we were watching this movie. Yeah. Um, he just, you know, he plays the dwarf, the fun dwarf guy in a lot of movies. So. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm, oh man, this this movie is so fun. Like it really is. You get past that first fifteen ish yeah. minutes, and the film just it becomes more fun. Let it, let it. I stopped taking notes because I just wanted right. to enjoy it. I thought it was just it was too goofy for me, and I couldn't decide whether or not I liked or didn't like the ghoulies. It is and a comedy. Was, it was it was kind of like it was a very dark comedy. It's kind of like all right. Oh, yeah. What was a movie we were talking about? And I was like, I just laughed the whole time. And it wasn't meant to be funny. Oh, You're Next. You're Next. Oh. Yeah. Because I've seen it so many times. I end up laughing a lot more at that movie than I ended up, you know, taking it seriously. Because there's right. just funny moments. Like when he flicks his back. When he's running out the door or whatever. But um, I think Ghoulies 2 is very similar in that sense. Where, yeah, it's pretty dark. Like yeah. the killing and stuff. But I also... I find the ghoulies so damn funny. The noises they make, the high five, the the smiles, the damn things smile. It's scary high smiling. Uh, and uh, the mummy when they, they mummify so the goofy. kid. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they wrap that kid up and. So yeah. is there anything? Any other main points we want to get after with ghoulies too? I'm a magician, you sons of bitches! <laughs> you can't kill me. And he's dead less than five minutes so, later. Yeah, the grandfather dies. They uh, they f- they find the same book. The book is what sends the ghoulies back uh, by sending summoning a giant ghoulie to eat them. Oh so my he, god! It eats all of them except for the one that bites the rich guy's balls off, and then it uh, and it goes after it goes after the uh, what's it, Sir Nigel Pennywhites, mm-hmm. Nigel Pennywhite, the. Uh, Phil Fondacaro's character, the the dwarf, Shakespearean. Uh, yes, our Shakespearean dwarf, <laughs> and he's like, oh, "Hey, can I eat?" He just like looks at him, and he's like, and he points to his stomach. And he's like, "Can I eat that?" And they're like, "Ah, great." So they get a gor- his gorilla costume, and they stuff clothes in it, and they put dynamite in it, and it eats it, and it blows up. Yeah, I you're I mean you got to remember like. For all the fun we have yeah. in this movie, there are still really bad. It's just stupid. Things. It's yeah. it's 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 a. If this is please suspend your belief. This is a goofy movie. It's it's fun. I mean, once you get to the giant ghouly, you're kind of. I think you have to suspend your disbelief a right. lot because it's just it's just fun. It's just meant to be funny at that point. I don't I don't really think you gotta you can't take that seriously. Mm. Um, now, if that thing was raging havoc and eating everything in sight. 
it'd be a way more serious tone. We, but. we do see the flying one get eaten, though. So that, I'm glad they remembered that. Hey, they wrapped that storyline up. So that was taken care of. Yeah, all loose ends are gone, folks. Except for the one that bites the guy's testicles. But when off. Harden, yeah, when Harden goes into the porta potty right. and gets his testicles bitten, <laughs> like, I, I still laugh at that part. I don't care. Like, I, it's not, I don't know. I don't take it seriously. It's just not serious. I just, I had that, I had that fear when I was a kid. I was like afraid there was a little monster in the toilet and it was going to eat me. Dude, I have a fear so, that there's spiders in the toilet. So, you know, that when that happened to him, I was like, yeah, you just, You've just shown my fear in real life. There it is. It's, uh... Anyhow. So they blow up the big ghoulie. <laughs> they, they, the ghoulie eats a stuffed animal, and everything is back to normal except for the one that decided to have a nice little taste taste test. Which is how we get Ghoulies 3. Which... Ghoulies go to college, which will have to be on the list eventually. Okay. Um, just, just because it's funny, funny as hell. And I get, I hear a lot of good reviews on it. Um, but yeah, what, what, are, so what do we think of Ghoulies 2? Uh, watch again, not watch again. Let's start there. Well, let's, let's talk about other, other movies with, with puppets and critters that are probably better. Like Gremlins. Okay. Gremlins, Gremlins, yeah. Gremlins 2. I would, I would put this on, uh. I would say watch this if you really love Gremlins and want something that's not as good, but it's okay. Sure, okay. It's along the same lines, but not as good. It's okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I definitely recommend this movie to others who haven't seen it before. Yeah. If you've seen it before, you know what we're talking about, and you're probably laughing with us as we're laughing at a lot of these things. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is honestly my first full watch through of Ghoulies 2. I had never seen it before. I have yeah. seen Ghoulies. Um, Ghoulies is a completely different movie, man. Completely. That's more of the serious, straight horror, no comedy at all, dry as shit. This is way better than that. I'm kind of glad they added in the high fives, though. But we're going to move on to our next puppet movie, which I think this one was, was probably the best puppet movie I've seen in, in a very long long time, Chris. I like the I like the puppet. <laughs> Um, I want to like the movie. I just have some issues with some delivery. Um, so let's open the talk with our favorite quote. Nice tits, bitch. Bam. There it is. So this turkey will not shut the fuck up. And I'm okay with that. Because he, he the turkey makes this movie. He makes this entire film. Start to finish... Um, I, I don't know. What do you, what do you, do you want to, how do you want to drive this movie? I think this is probably my new favorite Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to lie. I'm definitely going to watch the sequel. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt like this is one of the bad, the best bad movies I've seen in a very long time. Like to watch by myself alone, this is great. To watch as a drinking game, this is great. Like there, there's uh there's Raz moments and there's like, oh, they're self-aware moments. Um, I was at Friendsgiving uh, with, with a bunch of friends that I've been friends with in high school for mm -hmm. so many, many years, over 10 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I told them about watching this film, because I watched it that day before I went there that night, mm -hmm. so I told them about the movie, um, and the first question my buddy Kyle had was, should we watch it? And I go, no, 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 because there are certain people who are at this party who will not find it as humorous as us. But I told him, I go, if we ever have a guys-only Thanksgiving, I will definitely watch this movie. But I think there are, uh, out of our friend group, there are some women that probably would not find that movie very funny. In fact, they'd probably find it downright disgusting when it got to the getting stuffed portion of the movie. Oh, man. No, uh, this is a very, uh, very perverse, a very adult film. Like, there's, this is uh, very crude, very unapologetic, and, you know, unfortunately for... For me, that's my sense of humor. So <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie; I laughed from the beginning of this movie to the end of it because it is just so damn ridiculous. Oh gosh! Uh, but the horror aspect is still there. You you don't lose that. You know, you have the killing, you have the spooky story, you got the weird old guy, the red herring. Um, you know, but I right off the bat, you know who the killer is. There is no right. guessing game. It's well, just... <laughs> the explanation for why the killer is doing it is is hilarious, and it's just uh, so this this turkey was necromanced by a Native American five hundred and something years ago, mm -hmm. 
and he comes back that every 500 and something years to get revenge by killing white people. And uh, that's legitimately the plot. That's the plot. So, and they're like, oh, well, but we gave you, aren't, weren't you happy with all the land and casinos we gave you? And they're like, we almost were, but then we weren't. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it, it teeters on the offensive. It's so bad. There is nobody, um, no big stars in this movie. Every single person in this movie is indie-based, indie-budget, everything. Um, even the Naked Pilgrim right off the bat in the first five minutes of this movie, which thanks for telling me it was NS- NSFW because I almost was going to watch this at work yeah. while working. And then I was like, because it's on YouTube. I made that mistake with Elves. It's I, also on I Amazon Prime. Elves at the office thinking because oh. it was rated PG-13. Yes, but back then PG-13 was much yeah, different. Yeah, it showed everything. And I was like, right I'm sitting right my anyhow. Anyway, we'll get into that uh, next week. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I gotta turn this off. I had no idea. Whoopsie. Um, yeah. So, so back to things killing. We start off the movie with the pilgrims. They explain uh, pretty much the whole concept of why the turkey is there. Right. Um, we get a naked pilgrim chick uh, and some murder, and then we move on. We meet our um, protagonists, the kids, uh, Allie, Kristen, Johnny, and Billy. Um, do you remember the nerdy kid's name? Is that I don't remember Darren? his name. Uh, I think all, it is Darren. All I know is that these these two best friends were very... This is very definitely meant to be a joke. Like, all both of the guys are trying to get with the slutty girl, and the slutty girl's trying to get with uh, the hero, and the hero's trying to get with his girlfriend. Yes, Kristen. Uh, so these char- the, the characters are hilarious. So... We meet all of them. Um, they all have their own little backstories. Poor Johnny hurt his knee and is now the second string quarterback, so his dad doesn't want to talk to him anymore. It's like, okay, we don't need any of that fluff for this movie. Right. Um, in fact, this hour and 15 minute film could easily be under an hour have th- had they cut that crap out. Um, but you meet Kristen and you meet Allie, and right away Allie walks up and flashes her bra-wearing Lizzie. bosom... And her friend goes, it's Thanksgiving break, not titsgiving. Right away, we know we're in for some really high-class humor. Well, then the, uh, the slug girl keeps saying, spring break. Spring and break. And everybody's like, it's not, it's not spring break. And then the other guy starts saying it, and they just keep saying spring break over and over again. It's a little, uh, it's a little goofy. What other but, jokes uh, do they beat into the ground during this film? The John Bonet. Her legs... Open faster. Her, her, her legs are harder to close than the John Bonet place or some yep. case or something like that. Um, which you know they they played that joke out on purpose because the the guy says it again and it means like nobody's laughing. And she he, says it twice. Uh, one time they say it when they're oh when they're dropping Allie off. Well, she says it twice, and both of those times they're like, "Whoa, sick burn!" I yeah. heard that well, but they before. laugh so hard the second time. Oh yeah. Then yeah. Allie comes back, and she's like, "What are you guys laughing at?" And they're like, "Nothing." Like, yeah. oh, God, it's just forced. But well, they you could tell they they're they're really pushing it for the last joke, and then yes. he's like, "Her legs were harder to close in the Germany case," and like everybody's just like looking at him. Yeah. Like, what the hell? She just died. That's not funny. Yep. You, yeah, pretty much uh, you don't know when to quit, kind of yeah. thing, Ernest. Uh, <laughs> I'm friends with the cool kids because of you. Because of you. Oh, man, I was <laughs> bummed when, uh, when, when he dies, when Billy dies. Billy's a fat guy. And oh, yeah. when Billy's character gets killed, I was kind of bummed. I was like, oh, you were actually like my dumb friend humor relief, mm-hmm. you know? But I guess somebody had to die. Well, everybody dies except for uh, the girl and the uh, the hillbilly. Yeah. So Kristen and Oscar the hermit. That that guy's my favorite character because his dog, you know, his dog pees and brings the turkey back up, and the oh. turkey's like, ah, "Poor dog." Anyhow. Yeah, I hate whenever dogs die in uh, horror films, and that happens a lot. So yeah. we're gonna be tallying that up. Across the universe, probably. I don't. I don't want to keep count of that. We're not going to. Oh, um, right. yeah. But uh, fair enough. Anyhow, the hermit takes a gun. He starts chasing the turkey, 
And he's like, I'll kill you, turkey, if it's the last thing I do. So this hermit shows up sporadically, or whatever you want to call him. I don't, I don't know, hillbilly. He, uh, and then, and like, he just shows up shooting the turkey, and he's, like, hovering over the overweight guy, and he's like, See those droppings on your chest? Those are turkey droppings. I saved your life, boy. <laughs> they look like, and they look like peanut butter balls. They do. Like, like they put peanut butter balls in the guy's chest or whatever. And and oh man, that was I forgot about that scene. That was funny. That was <laughs> a good one. Over him. Yeah. Like, I just saved your life, boy. And then he just shows up randomly shooting the turkey. Goddamn turkey got away. He um, <laughs> you're right. I mean, sporadically is the right term because I wasn't expecting him at any point when he does show up. Even when they cut away from the kids to kind of follow him on his little journey. And so, how does he lose his eyesight again? Because at the end of the movie, he's wearing his bandana basically covering his eyes, it looked like. I don't know. I, I don't... It didn't make any sense to me. I, don't, I think he was wearing a bandana down pretty low, but I don't think he's meaning to be blind. Yeah. <laughs> but he was like, well, the... Spoilers, the turkey gets killed, but uh, the girl's like... His one of his legs flies out of the fire, and the girl picks it up and starts eating it. And the hermit's like, "You did a good job," and the girl's like, oh, "You know, I'm pretty badass." No, yeah, no, she's <laughs> the acting in this movie's terrible. If you it's didn't know, so bad. Uh... Well, if one of the premises is that nerdy kid wanted to be one of the cool kids, and I think yeah. that nerdy kid had one of the best lines in the movie. Which one? So Darren looks at the turkey and he goes. Looks like I got something you don't, turkey. And the turkey goes, what's that? A vagina? <laughs> and I, I couldn't stop laughing. He said I, that? Yes. He literally calls out the turkey and goes, it looks like I got something you don't. Because I think it's when he had the like the cross thing or whatever, to, the, the necklace or amulet or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was referring to. But then the turkey turns it around on him and goes, what's that? A vagina? Oh, and I'm right, like, right, oh right. my god, this is great. <laughs> calling, calling the kid a pussy. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the movie, the, the turkey makes the movie. So, so let me boil down this movie. The turkey makes it. If if the turkey didn't have the lines, this would be just like that damn scarecrow movie we watch, which honestly was a good horror film, but lacked all of the pieces of comedy that they intended it for it to have. Mm. Luckily, this movie keeps all of the humor, and I think that's what really elevates personally the the watchability of it i really loved it because like well there were one part the turkey comes in the girl's having sex and the turkey just kills the guy having sex with her and then he starts having sex with her and then at the very end she turns around and she's like oh my god and he's like you just got stuffed bitch yeah and so <laughs> wait we're going back into the house after that johnny Someone, says oh my god one extra small gravy flavored condom <laughs> Some of this, like, this is the some of the parts where I'm like, okay, you're pushing, you're pushing my limits here. Why? You're really testing me, cause like I don't go into a horror film thinking I'm gonna see a giant turkey fuck some girl. Like that's not what I'm looking for. I didn't expect it. Either. I mean, I, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I can laugh at it now, but when I was watching it, I was like, holy shit, what is going on right now? And then I had to, you know, I guess I had to pull myself back and remember, like, there's just... As soon as you see the turkey wearing those uh, those fake glasses, the the whatever... <laughs> when he was the, the, the dad? Big, the big nose, mustache, glasses with... Yeah, and he pretends... Well, he meets the dad, and they have this really awkward oh. conversation. He's yep. just sitting there at the table with the girl's dad, one of the characters he's trying to kill, and he's, and he's the sheriff of town, which I need to go back on this guy. Uh, but he's... Uh, he's just so awkward the turkey's like hey this has been fun but it's fucking awkward I'm gonna leave and so the guy's like oh you look like a duck kind of down there like that and the turkey's like oh, I'm gonna kill him now I have to kill him yeah, so called he, me a duck so he tears the dad's face off and he puts it on his that's what I thought you were talking about <laughs> yeah and nobody fucking notices his daughter's like oh, daddy what happened and he's like oh and he takes the turkey hat off and he's like oh you got a haircut uh yeah <laughs> also the voice I thought was really funny yeah. for the turkey I thought it was well done it was over the top which is perfect for a turkey uh, but yeah him being um, what's the killer from Silence of the Lambs <sighs> Cowboy Bill 
Cow- Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Yeah. I guess when he so. plays a when he plays a Buffalo Bill moment there, when he mm. literally skins the dad and wears him, a little bit of Leatherface, a little bit of Buffalo Bill there. I I definitely found that to be amusing. Right. So, I, what do you want to talk about with the sheriff? You said so you want to go back on that guy. <laughs> as soon as we meet the sheriff, he's on the phone with his daughter. Yes. And he's drinking. Yeah, he takes a sip of the coffee before that, and he's like. Oh, Cheryl, this coffee tastes like crap. Oh, did man. you shit me? She's like, as a matter of fact, I, I did. did. I want pulled, a divorce. She pulls the pot out and shows it to him. And they're shitting it. <laughs> it's just like, why? Uh, another thing that we could have cut out of this film and made it under an hour. Making the sheriff so, like, with the glued on mustache was one of the best decisions. Um, Cheryl the step bomb is what she's categorized as in IMDb. And she literally had a 30 second part. 30 second part. To serve the shitty coffee. As a matter of fact, I did. I want a divorce. And then he's talking to his daughter, and he, at the end of the convert, he's like, okay, honey, get home safe. And then at the end of the convert, by the way, your stepmother left me. Click. That was it. Like, there was no conversation about it. That was just maybe the actress who was playing the stepmom didn't want to be in the movie, but they needed something, so they filled it with that. I don't know. Seems like a really weird 30 second clip just to have her in there for. But Well, I mean, when the dog was peeing on the turkey, the turkey said, Man, I'm pissed. There's <laughs> <laughs> so many bad quotes. Like that. I, this film was made in 2009. Yeah. It was, it's only 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, and how many sequels does it have? We're already one. up to Thanksgiving. No, Thanksgiving 5? There's a fifth one? I, I, uh... So, so Thanks Killing 3 is the second movie. I need to Google this. They didn't... So Thanks Killing 2, or Thanks Killing 3, it says, like, the tagline, this is the only movie to skip its own sequel, because the premise of the third movie is Turkey's looking for the second movie. The There's only, only two. The only one in yeah. existence. So... <laughs> That's so I, funny. It, The third one, I'm sure we're gonna... Or, number three, I'm sure we're gonna enjoy as well, but... That's for another time. Uh, it looks I, way better than the first one. I think they had more money. I don't oh, think they had man. a very big budget because they did film this at a university. All right, next Thanksgiving, we are, we are set. Yeah. Uh, so I did want to go over a couple things here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done. All my notes are spent. Yeah. Just like that turkey inside of Alley. Well, one of the quotes by Darren, which I wanted to go through, was, well, he, the, the nerdy kid, he's like, I'm going to have sex with someone in this car. <laughs> yeah, for once, you know. And then he looks at his hand. It's not going to be just myself. Yeah, they made it very obvious he's talking about masturbation. Yeah. Great joke. And when everybody's like, Those... oh, it's not going to be me. I'm. It's not going to be me. Even the and guys, though. Even right. the guys said, it's not going to yeah. be me. Yeah, yeah, and then they're like... Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's probably going to be you probably. if he has sex with anyone. And then probably the going to be Allie. <laughs> okay, so where is it? Her legs are harder to close than the John Benet Ramsey case. That that's that's the re-recurring quote, but then like I don't know. I think Darren, the nerdy kid, I think he really loved Billy. I think he did. that was who he was talking about. Oh, that's who he yeah. was going to have sex with in the car? Yeah. I mean, Honestly, the way they play out that scene, yeah. you, I think you nailed you nailed it. I think like there was a deeper plot. There's no I secret know. here. <laughs> Darren loved Billy uh, so much that he he wished it was him instead of Billy. Is that what yeah. he screams when he dies? Well, they kept feeding each other ice cream in the flashback that I was distracted by that the whole time. Um, yeah. But he says something. He says, uh, "No, without you, I can't. I'm in the cool kids because of you." that beautiful but anyhow that's all i have for uh for thanks killing all right good i'm glad now now we can move on to bigger and better things have you guys uh, thought about following us on twitter or instagram you can follow us at two guys horror pod that is at the number two guys horror pod and we really would appreciate you guys following us on twitter and instagram just to stay up to date on any time we post episodes we do have our recurring weekly episodes every saturday arizona time mountain standard at 10 a.m is when we release them um currently we are filming every other or recording every other week which sets up our two weeks ahead of time 
Um, the more attention you guys give us, though, the more things that we are willing to do, like bonus episodes. So we did release our Dr. Sleep bonus episode a couple weeks back. Um, shoot, it's almost been like a month now. Um, we do have plans to, to record a Shining bonus episode and maybe even a Shining TV miniseries episode right. if you guys want us to do that. We don't want to do things that you don't want to listen to. So please, send us your feedback. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. That way we know what you guys want to hear. What is that again? Is you, you say Two Guys Horror Pod? Two Guys Horror Pod. And on that's Instagram. On and Twitter. And Twitter. Well, we do appreciate you guys listening. Um, and like we said, we want to hear your feedback. Let us know what's up. And uh, yeah, see us on the social medias. Have a good one. Doot doot. <laughs>